Always. Oh, did I fuck that up? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm a master editor. <laughs> she used to be an actress. Did she ever do anything I would have saw? I think her biggest deal is that she started a pilot. What's a pilot? Well, you know the shows on TV? Uh, I don't watch TV. Yes, but you're aware that there's an invention called television, and on that invention they show shows. Yeah. Well, the way they pick the shows on TV is they make one show, and that show is called a pilot. Then they show that one show to the sh- people who pick shows, and on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. Some get accepted and become TV programs, and some don't become nothing. She started one of the ones that became nothing. Welcome to Couch Pilots, All of My Friends. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, and with me is my number one guesser. It's Captain Philip Rasser. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm very good. I'm glad we do this in the evening. I'm I'm a I'm not a morning guy at all. Oh no, I and I, I I don't mean to, to ruin your little th- spiel, but <laughs> too late. So we had some inclement weather. Weather. We had some inclement inclement weather the other day. Cuomo. Uh, last week, and my wife's like, uh, you're going to take me to work, because we work right across the street from each other. Sure. I'm not driving. You're taking me to work. And I'm like, okay. Because in the morning, when I get up, I don't want to talk to anybody. I have a routine. It's very quick. It's very precise. I have 20 minutes to drive to work. I have 20 minutes to sit in my car, smoke cigarettes. Do my time hop, uh, 1,300 days in a row, by the way. Ow! What, what is a time hop? Is that something from uh, a Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah, yeah. It, it, shows you, it, <clears throat> it, it shows you all of the, your lustful dreams you had the night before. Ooh. But, uh, so I was like, you know what? Your safety is most important to me. Let's do this. And she, first of all, she made me five minutes late from my routine. Second of all, I couldn't smoke in the car on the way there because she doesn't, I, don't, I don't, can't smoke in the car with her. And she didn't shut the fuck up the whole 20 minutes there. I dropped her off. I swear to God, I don't even think I stopped the car. Because, you know, it just throws you like off. Like a rolling your... stop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a California mm-hmm. stop, I guess, mm-hmm. for all our California listeners. But I, I am not a morning person. I will never be a morning. If we had to do this in the morning, this would not be as good. You're not very flexible, like literally and physically. Yes. That, that's the same thing. Physically and uh, mentally. mentally. Mentally, there's another voice. And, vo- and here, let's get that guy on here, should we? No, no, no. I just had to chime in. No, me. hold on. Let's uh, no, what, go, go what, ahead and just ruin the banter part of the beginning. What intro do you? What intro music do you want? I've got heavy metal. I've got What's the dog one. Dog oh, police. Oh, that's a good Ooh, one. Yeah. Police, yeah. Right? Let's. You want to in- introduce him? Ladies and gentlemen, we have not seen this guy for almost a year. It's been pre-COVID, all over his chest. But we're glad to have him back. He has the uh, most amazing podcasting club in central Illinois. Not true. From the Challenge Podcast, let's welcome Tim back to the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, to the audience. Thank you, everybody in the audience. Awesome. We do this live now. Oh, I know. yeah, I know. Big you change. Know, everybody is six feet apart, but it sounds like a great audience, but yeah. everybody is six feet apart. So you're drinking tall, tall boys. <laughs> sure, why not? It's a classy, classy establishment here at Blake's house, so yeah. i got to bring the classy. Not boxes. a lot of people say that about my house. <laughs> I can't remember anyone saying that. It's the classiest that. place. Yeah, well, Tim, you heard it now. Tim, how, how has COVID changed your life? <laughs> you know, I'm, I've already worked from home. I've been doing that for a long time, so it didn't change there. But now I do it with a bunch of children and wife around me all the time, and it's terrible. I'm like <laughs> you, Blake. Like I like my routines. I like my things that I do. And pre-COVID, I would put the kids on the bus. I would say goodbye to the wife, and Masturbate. I would have these like this is a jerk off all over the house. Off. I had these ten minutes between where I was like all by myself. Work hadn't started yet, and it was great. And now I'd, I'm never by myself ever. I mean, and, and and that's you know like me and Molly, we we both are essential, obviously. Duh. Right. Uh, so we have been working this whole time in the um, office with other the, people in the office yes. with the other people. Uh, so you know, I have not experienced. Being with my significant other twenty four hours a day oh, in the same don't room, don't experience mm-hmm. that. And no, I don't know. It's not good. Uh, and I'm lonely. 
How many times has divorce been talked about during COVID? <laughs> oh, during COVID? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, oh, man. I don't want to count the ones before. <laughs> just, just the 10 months. <laughs> just the COVID. last 10 months. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go uh, five. Yeah. But it, like that. I cannot imagine. That would be very, very difficult for sure. Yeah, it is. You, you it can't. Is. I mean, you have an upstairs. You have a beautiful home, very Thank large you. home. Thank uh, you. You have uh, an upstairs and a downstairs. The downstairs has 47 <laughs> corridors to get to the bathroom. It's like a labyrinth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But uh, that still. I mean, that's just a stairwell. Uh, anybody who wants to argue can go wherever you're at. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you are not the person that wants to argue. It's I'm, I'm obviously... <laughs> you're blaming my wife. I'm blaming your, my, okay. your, your wife, but you can't go anywhere. I mean, there's nowhere no. to go. No. Every time you get a glass of water from the kitchen, she's there to talk to you. Every time you have lunch, she wants to eat lunch with you. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... Yeah, a few so minutes like, let's alone meet the, would Let's be meet in nice. the cafeteria, Tim. <laughs> but I mean, have you? Because that because I have not experienced it. I have my daughter on the weekends, and it's just me during the week. So I, mm. I'm, I'm I'm living, but I've never been at home this much. I've always been somewhere working. But you are in a position where you do have a, a nice sized house. Do you do you have parts of the house where like this is just my area? I'm I can kind of quarantine myself down here to k- kind of get some space away from everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, as you guys know, and I'm not ashamed to bring it up on the podcast. Me and my wife are sleep divorced. We have been for. 10 years we don't sleep in the same bedroom so i do have my own little bedroom and uh sure. yeah I'm, that's got to help a little bit it's nice it is nice at the end of the day where people are just like you know when you're on you know from the time you wake up you're getting the kids ready to go and then you're working and then you're get, picking the kids up and then it's dinner and it's like right but this thing you're just you're spinning your wheel like you're like the yeah. hamster in a cage who is working his ass off right uh spinning that wheel but not going anywhere right so sometimes it's nice to just be like leave me alone I'm gonna sit by myself right. for an hour. Sleep divorce. I've never heard of that phrase before. Is it? Um, it's probably nice though, right? Because like maybe the 1950s and 60s sitcoms were teaching us something. Yeah. Separate beds. Because I don't know, but I fart a lot in my sleep. Yeah. I don't want a lady in there when I'm doing that. Yeah. I, me and my wife, we used to sleep in the same bed, and then when she got pregnant, we stopped just for, you know. Comfort reasons, sure. Because you weren't comfortable. Because we, I wasn't comfortable, and then she. I don't want to roll over on that baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then dealing with a newborn, you know, everybody has sleep sure. issues, and now it's like we try to get back in the same bed, but we don't. Really, neither of us sleeps well, and it's like, who cares? What do we? How care? does that? So, how has COVID affected your sex life? Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it hasn't. No, that hasn't changed. It really? No. For the better, or I mean, I mean, it's fine. I have no complaints in that department. Really? Yeah, it's fine. All right. Well, can I get your wife's? <laughs> phone number so she can like text my wife and say oh. hey it's not that oh, bad I, you, I thought that was going somewhere else so. too, if you just man. keep doing it it'll be fine can I get your wife's information so I can have sex with her no I thought I, that's what I, I was no. going to really what what say no, I, I, did too. Dude, I did too what, did what too. kind of person do you think I am I, a guy has sex with people's wives <laughs> we're not talking about have you Kevin's had sex? wife have you had sex with a married woman that's not married to you what yes I have oh see Hey, you can, we you knew. We knew. You, you don't get to a hundred by just <laughs> <laughs> dating single ladies by not breaking a few of the commandments, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I had a story, but we'll. Oh no, we're gonna. No, no, no we okay. don't have time for that. Well, we, we says something I really want to talk about is um, one of uh, Tim's other. You just do two shows right now, two other podcasts: the Challenge and the Internet Freak Show. Those are the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've been listening to the Internet uh, Freak Show. Oh, really? Bit. Just put a new episode out like two days ago. Um, which one was that? The, uh, the, I heard the key lime pie one, and then I heard okay. the one where you did an episode where there was a ring of, of men who wanted to uh, have sex with children and then eat them. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it was disturbing. <laughs> but what was, the, what was the recent one? I, I did hear it. It was uh, the Godspeed You Black Emperor Yes, band. it was an album. They had a, they, they had a they, cassette they, that was found, yep, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you know that band? You're a music guy. Godspeed you, Black Emperor. No. I never heard of that either. I hadn't either. So the, look, for those who don't know, why don't you explain the premise of uh, Internet Freak Show? So it's just sort of weird shit that happens on the internet. It's all around internet communities and internet mysteries and things that just sort of happen mostly online. So this one, a band recorded an album in 1994. They lost every copy of the album that they recorded. And then in 2013, a guy posted online saying he had one. He found one. And so it was just about the community, like, trying to find this music because this band is, is popular in some circles. And uh, if you want to know how it ends, you got to listen to the podcast. Nice. Way to how go. About that? That's a pretty good cliffhanger. Selling that. Setting it up good. And, and got to sell it. How, where do you find that at? 
All the places that podcasts are. Just Internet Freak Show. Internet Freak Show. Yeah. I, I was listening to one, and they had a commercial. It like cut you off mid-sentence. That's that new... Yeah, we're on that new platform. Right. Yeah, and it just does that. It's, it throws something on the beginning and the end, and just somewhere in the middle, Yep. boom, there's a commercial. I could be more specific about where I put it, but I'm... Who cares? I'm super right. lazy. <laughs> how do you pick those? Uh, how, how do you decide which... Uh, mysteries you're going to tackle because there's a lot of things like everything's online these days all the big stories are viral and you see those but the ones that you've picked are, are not ones that i've necessarily heard about mm-hmm. and so there may be a little bit off the beaten path but how, how sure. do you decide on them well you know i mean i'm big into reddit that's how, that's actually how i met you guys and everything uh so it was the you know podcaster sex forum on <laughs> yeah. reddit of yeah. course uh, okay, slash podcaster sex forum <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I just kind of cruise around Reddit all the time. And when I see something that seems interesting, I just save the comment and I go back and revisit it later. Like how to, uh, chop up and prepare children to be eaten. Is that a subreddit? I thought that was a very interesting subreddit. That was a disturbing episode. (laughs) One of his longest ones. Usually the episodes are like between nine and 14 minutes. He went on for three and a half hours about how to uh, (laughs) roast the rump. Of children under the age of three. Yeah, Ooh, put them oh, on a spit, good. turn them on the spit. It's I, pretty gross. I'm downloading it right now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I left mouth-watered, but it was very disturbing. <laughs> yeah, I read chat transcripts between two people that were talking about how to like roast babies and stuff. Super weird. Yeah, that was... Wow. Um, it was hard to listen to, and mm-hmm. it? it's hard to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my and my, we we think we have a we have a bad by watching horrible TV. You had to for three hours describe how to cook a baby. Oh, meticulously, yeah, like wow. There's a lot of the thing on the internet Rachel was Ray. like um a, a guy a like, little sausage fingers. <laughs> but you go uh, there's a guy he got his head chopped off. You know they got a big curtain and a bunch of guys wearing turbans and a guy gets his head sawed off and you can see that online. If you choose to, I, I never watch that stuff. I can I can't see it. I don't want it. He did an episode recently about some lady uh, who was murdered. Actually, maybe it wasn't lately. Maybe about five six months ago, mm. and uh, she was murdered. And the guy who killed her took a bunch of pictures and posted online. I think you can see them online. Oh yeah, yeah. You I can. don't want to see that fucking yeah. shit. Yeah, I, I don't either. It's creepy. Well, did, did you have to though? Did you see that no, stuff? No, never okay, did. never did. Because you're you're doing the research and putting out these episodes. I didn't know if that means you have to look at a lady's a head no. hanging on by a string. I'm like you, man. I don't have the stomach for it. Which like I watch horror movies all day, every day. They're my favorite genre. But I, if I know it's a real thing, I can't look at it. It's kind of like me with porn, right? <laughs> you hate like, the fake stuff. No, that <laughs> you can't look at a real naked woman. No, there's there's certain things I just I won't watch. Like I won't click because I know like this is just. Uh, you got to give me an example of that. Yeah. Uh. Like, um, like scat porn. Oh yeah. Well, this is like wh- <laughs> one of the things that I don't watch is like when they're like tied up on like a machine. You know what I mean? Like they're you can't the, do it. like I was like I don't want to see somebody get tortured. I right. you know I it, you know if the girl is not enjoying it, that's fine. But like I don't want to see her tied up and not enjoying it. You know what I mean? You right. know I like. Um, I also I, don't watch uh, uh, porn with uh, black dudes or the ones having sex. Your dicks are so you like big. to imagine your penis. Well, yeah, I was like, those yeah. dicks are way too big. You it's, know? A, it's intimidating. Yeah. It's like, why does that guy get one of those ever ready fire logs in his pants? And I'm walking around with a. And with this new projector I got in the Hebrew basement. National. It's like, you know, this new projector I have in the basement is 150 inches. Mm-hmm. You know, you put a porno on that thing, and oh, Jesus yeah. Christ, I mean. That's a big cack. Jesus. It's a, t- it's a 10 foot cock. Molly won't that. leave the basement. <laughs> Did you watch the two girls one cup when that was making the rounds? What, I, interesting story. Uh, I was doing IBWIP. I had some different hosts mm-hmm. at the time, and we watched. We used to have a segment on the show called oh, yeah. Norma Jean Watches Porn, and uh, we had a, one of my co-hosts. It was a female. Uh, every episode, we would find some porn for her to watch, and we would like. So everybody got her reactions live. You know, she didn't get to see it or anything. <laughs> right. Um, and the one are, was, are you hearing all the noises of the porn on the yeah, show, can, or is it just in her? No, you can hear the audio. You know, okay. you can hear the audio, and then you hear her reaction. And like the one was, you know, like when uh, the girl and this guy had sex on a bear that he had just shot. Like, in oh, the, I've heard of that one. Yeah, uh, but then we watched the, the the two girls one cup one. That was that was a really good episode. Never but, saw that. Did you see that too? I did see that one. I watched yeah. the whole thing. I I didn't like what I watched. No, it was no, not appealing. You know, what I kept saying to myself, self, because that's how I refer to myself. This is not really shit. This is chocolate pudding right. or ice cream or something. This is I just you. kept telling myself okay. that. But you saw it come out of their buttholes. 
Yes, but I've also seen a lot of stuff come out of girls' buttholes that I know it's not natural. That, that wasn't there. <laughs> it, it go I know there. that there's such thing as an enema. So you right. think they shoved ice cream up her ass and then she squirted it back out, or like an instant right. chocolate pudding enema? I'm not saying there was. Makes me feel better about. Watching I'm not it. saying there wasn't poop involved in that, but there's no way they were chowing oh, down like God. it was nobody's business and not right. throw it up. You, you introduce me to a person who doesn't throw up when putting shit in their mouth, <laughs> oh. and I'll introduce you to a fucking alien. Right. Man, is that you think that's what aliens do? I think they. Yeah, I think that's why they're here. I didn't mean alien in the sense of a galactic alien. I meant <laughs> like an illegal sen- alien. I meant <laughs> only <laughs> Mexicans will eat shit. A lot, I mean. ti- a lot of times, uh, like H.G. Uh, Wells will write a novel. He says uh, aliens are coming here for our resources, and it's usually like water, you know, or uh, or uh, oil, probably. But do you think some aliens would come here for our feces? It could be possible. <laughs> Because how you know you you don't know what they distribute. That's true. What what they consider currency. I guess distribute was the wrong. <laughs> you know what I meant. No, I know what you mean. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Uh, shit is money. Oh okay, yeah. No, I'm, I'm back on board. Mo okay. money, mo money, mo money. What are you doing on your phone? What's so important? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I was inter- I was subscribing and and downloading a couple of inter- uh, episodes of Internet Freak Show just because I I have failed to do so and so you want to do it right on the show. Yeah, but also. I bought a new phone. Oh, yes. From a fucking shyster <laughs> at a fucking cell phone company. Oh, I bet I know who this is. You can and, say who it is. And, <laughs> nope. And, uh, <laughs> we know him. I am not happy with my cell phone. What is it? Right now. What is the phone? What type it's, of phone? It's is the it? brand new uh, S21. I mean, like, I was the first one in Morton to get it. Like, it's and, a Samsung? Yeah. It's Galaxy. Okay. You gotta go Apple, dude. That's the problem. No, Galac- no, no, no. You mean a Galactic? Yeah. Intergalactic, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. My first lab dance was to that song. Really? Very fun memories of that song. Wow. But, uh, it, you know what, for the most part, I, 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 I'm I, fine with the phone. It's not a big deal right now. Uh, but I have one problem with it, and I can't fix the problem. And so I'm watching the clock because eventually uh, I tried to fix this problem today, and I will find out in a couple hours if it fixed or not. This thing... Will go black at a certain time of night. You can't see the time. You can't get the home screen. You mm-hmm. can't do anything to it. And then at a certain time in the morning, oh hello. And I don't like that. I yeah. got an Apple phone. It doesn't do any of that. It just <laughs> you know that my Apple phone. It does. Uh, it um, it works. I guess is what I should say. Yeah. I, and, you and should he, get one. And he's no. I don't want an Apple. I don't well, want anything to do with okay, that. Okay. Well then, uh, keep working with that. That sounds like it's working for you. <laughs> No, uh, but no, I, I just joking. I, uh, Scott is, uh, is, is <laughs> it is Scott. Scott is a very good salesperson. We've, we've, we, the whole family have gotten new plans and everything. And Don't I, get me started on what Scott's talked me into doing. Good lord, he almost He's a good in, salesman. He almost talked me into buying a uh, the, the 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 watch. Oh, yeah. Because they were they were they were giving me two hundred and fifty dollars credit on a four hundred dollar watch. Do you mm-hmm. have one of those smart watches? I get I get the Apple Watch. Yeah. Is it, is it worth it? I don't want. I don't want no. anything more on me than I have to have. It's all right. It's fine. Can you talk into it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, can, you can do Siri stuff on it. Yeah. Can you uh, FaceTime on it? No. You can make phone calls on it though. Voice phone calls. Laser uh, laser beams. No laser beams. Flashlight. Fuck worthless it. flashlight. Can you watch you can porn on it? it? It has a flashlight. Uh, yeah, you can watch porn on it. Can you? You can't watch video? Oh, well, you, you can know watch what? videos. Let's call Scott right now. I need to order mine. <laughs> that, I was going to say, you, he you said need I had this, a couple weeks. You need to the smaller cocks on your wrist rather than the huge ones on your wall. That's <laughs> right. what you need. But I'll have to I'll, I'll have to put it on my... Because oh, yeah, I wear my watch. My, my, watch? Mm-hmm. I, my watch, I wear it on my left hand so I can still jerk off hand and watch it. Because I was kind of worried for a second. I was like, oh, sh- I, you know. Sure. But yeah. no. I wear. Do, do you wear? You wear on your left, correct? Because you're right. I wear on my left, but that because you're right. Factor into my equation of why. No, but you're right handed, right? I am right handed. I jerk off with my left, but I am right handed. You wow. jerk off with your left That's hand. True. That's Interesting true. technique. I have never been able to do that ever. <laughs> you, I, I don't know what else you, to say. Can you use your right hand? I can't. I choose not to. I, I this is my my left hand is my preferred ha- masturbatory hand. Really? Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's what they. <laughs> uh, What's can, that? You got something you want to say? No. You, fucking, you can fucking use the it. Apple Watch. <laughs> you guys will love this. You can use the Apple Watch as a viewfinder for your camera. So Blake, you could hide your phone in the bathroom. And watch what goes on on your watch. Oh, like Chuck Berry. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you can watch girls take huge hairy shits yeah. with your you phone. Go. If that's not going to make you buy one, Blake, I don't know what's going to I'm, I'm, I'm texting J- uh, Scott right now and saying, you know what? <laughs> I don't have the money, but let's do it. He's making a note to do it. Yeah, he, <laughs> That's something he will click on is Chuck Berry porn videos online. <laughs> 
No. I'm not into scat. And I, I, to be honest with you, like, I've also, like, there was a time where I was kind of, like, into squirting videos. Uh-huh. But, like I said, I know that they're just filling their fucking cooch up with water, and the girl's in pain holding it until, you know, it's time to shoot it out. Time to release yeah. it? I had that one girl that re- that nat- was a natural squirter. I, th- I think she probably she was filled something up. No, she was a chef. You looked away for a second, and she was out there with a the turkey baster. <laughs> no, she even said, hey, you know, I, I do this. Just so you know, don't freak out. I do this. I was like, man, whatever. And then it happened, I was like... Whoa! So why can't girls on pornos do that if she, if she can because do that? the amount of it is a lot different than like it was a lot less in real life. I I mean there was a a good did, amount. Did you have to prep for sex with her? Lay down towels and right. rubber sheets um, and shit like that. I didn't. Good I, I just I just winged it because I didn't believe her. Yeah, but now I'm a believer. And you just had the one time with her. Is this the is no, this, no, is this the one where your dog peed all over your bed? Afterwards? No, no, no. This this one uh, this one is the one that. The, the the one day that I had uh, sex with three different girls in one day, mm-hmm. she was the second one. <laughs> okay. And she was a chef. Yeah. Well, there you nice go. Nice girl. Nice girl. We all have milestones, don't we? <laughs> it's one for the memory books. Speaking of milestones, mm-hmm. let's talk about season 28. 28 years we've been doing this show. I think that's what it means. Yeah. Yep. And we are on season 28. Tim. Yes, sir. Uh, you did watch a pilot today, but I don't think you're very aware that season 28, we are doing all game shows. Yes. Oh, I was not aware of that. Okay. Yes. So yeah. 10 episodes a season, 10 game shows, 10 up, 10 down. I'm excited. I, I knew that they were out there, and there's a site where I'm finding even more now. So maybe in the future we do another 10. But I wanted to focus on it mainly because I know that you, Blake, love game shows. Love game shows. Yes. Love them to death. And, uh, and you have an infatuation with The Price is Right, which is I love The Price great. is Right. So it, it, it just seemed like... Tim, to be here, Jason, can you take your headphones off real quick? Yeah, I'll just take them off here. Tim, the reason I was so excited about this, most game shows are, are not over 30 minutes. <laughs> That's another reason I was like, no, but... All right, Jason, go ahead and put your headphones oh, on. Yeah, all right. But I do love game shows. I love old game shows from like this, the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, I think you can really tell... Uh, uh, you can... There's like a, a, a line in the sand of what society was like mm-hmm. at that time if you watch a game show. Yeah, sure. They're absolute time yes. stamps from, from the phrases they speak to the things they reference. To what they're wearing. Absolutely. The, the, their the, hair. The, 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 the hair that they're wearing. Well, the they, attitudes. Like this one had some very sexist moments in it that probably weren't sexist back then. I am watching. I'm a huge proponent of Pluto TV. <laughs> they have a, <laughs> a, a channel completely 24 hours, seven days a week dedicated to the price is right, and I see a lot of 1970s, some 1980s Bob Barker, and it is wildly sexist. But the yeah. women uh, seem to enjoy it. Yeah, it's a, weird, <laughs> a different time, right? Yeah, nobody is. It, it, this is relevant on this, you know, not spoiler, but on this, uh, they all seem very fine with it. Yeah, they did not. Yeah, they were not they bothered did, at all. You know, nobody yeah. got on Twitter and said "Me too" or anything like that <laughs> shit. You know, no one created Twitter back then and then went on. But there you know what I'm trying to say? Too. Like, they nobody was like, "No, I know you." Not mean. one time during this this pilot did I or the next week's pilot did I see any woman even flinch. Right, and yep. there was a lot of women involved in this one, and yep. they didn't flinch at all. Especially mm-hmm. this one we're about yes. to talk about. There That's what I'm saying. Lot. Oh, is this the more sexist one? I would say so. Yeah, oh, good. Because there was good. more women on it, but. So good? Is I'm that so said? happy about that. Oh, my God. Let's Blake, what's your favorite game show? <sighs> Man, my favorite game show. Big Bucks, No Whammies, right? Uh, what was it? Uh, what was that show? Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I keep wanting to say win, lose, or draw. I know that's not the it. The Gremlins or whatever. But I did like I, I did like Card Shark, too, because those those cards were huge. Mm-hmm. you know. But I, I really... I, I can watch any... Any game show. There are game. There's like three or four game show channels on Pluto TV. I'm, I'm all up. You know I what? It. Gotta see it. It came up. It, it's an app on my phone that I didn't know I had. I'm going to make an account. Right. Make some favorites. And I'm going to make shit happen. You got to, man. There is a challenge channel. Just uh, FYI. Oh, there is. I'm That's not right. watching I that. Didn't, <laughs> <laughs> not watching. What is your you favorite? You can think of that as a game show. <laughs> okay. So thinking of that as a game show, is that, since you do a podcast about it, is that your favorite if game show? If you consider it a game show, yeah, I would say it has to be. Are you still enjoying winner. watching the challenge? I enjoy watching it. I don't know if I enjoy podcasting about it every week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I relate to you on that, Blake, but... Uh... You know, it is what it is. But, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, but we I'm are too deep now. I got to keep going. Right. Yeah. You, you've invested too much time. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. me spending time with Jason. I've invested too much time. I feel like time. I should have right. my headphones off for this conversation. <laughs> no, it's no? fine. Okay. It's fine. I want you to. <laughs> we just don't give a shit anymore, Jason. Yeah. But uh, but 
you know, uh, our generation and and our our kids see reality game shows like Wipeout and mm-hmm. The Challenged, and uh, they think of those as game shows, whereas we think of like Card Shark mm-hmm. right. or the, you know stuff like Love that. Connection. Lo- Love Connection. What a great one! <laughs> I was big that into was Love Connection, show. man. Sure, Chuck, was a game Chuck show. Woolery. Weren't there well, winners hey, in that game? We'll show? be back in two and two. <laughs> two and two. Oh, is that what he would say? Two and yeah, two? Yeah, go like do yeah, all these things too. Oh, yeah. wow. I guess, I guess it is. I guess that was like a, the first form of like a reality like mm. game show. Or like The Bachelor, I guess. Or The Bachelor, you could call yeah, that yeah. a game sure, show. that's a game show. But, but uh, for the most part, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s and even in the 80s, that wasn't really what a game show was. I like, I'll tell you what. This is why like, you say what kind of game shows you like. I like... Lots of lights. <laughs> I like lots of sound effects. And I like big hair. I like big <laughs> hair on the women. Just like the curly afro looking things on these women. Big collars. And uh but I just I, I like noise. Celebrities in there? Uh, I, I, you, you know what, I can give or take, it, it, they have to be a good one, but, uh, they had the, uh, the, the biggest crossover, I think, Asian, uh, show ever was like, uh, uh, most extreme challenge. Fucking that loved that show, yeah. So, so it was all, it was all like Chinese or Japanese or something, and then like it was dubbed over purposefully ridiculous. Yeah. LaDouche, wasn't that? Oh yeah, LaDouche. Names? And something one of them, LaDouche. didn't one look like a, like a military captain yeah. all the time? It was ridiculous. <laughs> so that was really kind of, uh, inex- but, uh, almost tame. By Asian standards. Sure. Because you always hear about the weird and wild game shows, even parodied on Saturday Night Live with uh, like Chris Farley and Mike Myers where they had to cut their fingers off if right. they got the wrong answer. D- have you ever watched any of those? And, and do you like those because they are such a spectacle? No, I've, I, I don't think I've ever gotten into those. I mean, those are uh, like pretty intense, like over, like overstimulation. You know, like, it's got to be. Yeah. I want like I want to be able to like walk around the house, hear it, know what's going on. Sit down and watch for 15 minutes. Get up, go in the kitchen. Yeah. Whereas the ones you're talking about, I'm thinking you have to be like you're, you're like in five minutes. You see more than like happens in an it's hour. It's madness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about, right, Tim? I do. Absolutely. You, you've seen some of that. Stuff. Yeah, I love it. Oh, you love it? Like, like yeah, MXC. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, not, not just like even beyond that, the other game shows where like someone's on fire and then all of a sudden like a man dressed like a snake walks out and you know it's just like confetti right. and then oh. explode like it's. It's it is nonstop. Yeah, I don't think I've seen those. No, I wouldn't have seen those. But I, I have. I'm t- trying to go back to like the game shows I watched as a kid. You know, when you stay home from school. Sure. And shit. American like, Gladiators. And win, lose, or draw, like you said. Yeah. What was the one where they're in a tic tac toe? A tic tac toe. Oh, is that called? Uh, no, Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood, Hollywood Squares. Hollywood Squares. Yes, that was yeah, great. That was a good one. Um, and like I think about ones like now also is like nailed it. It's a cooking show. Oh, yeah. it's a, I, I do watch I like that. that. I I watch it because of the host. I like Nicole yeah. Byer. I like Nicole Byer. Have you ever listened to her podcast? Uh, she's got like would five. You, would you date me? Oh, that one. Why no, won't you date no. me? Or, oh, but you got to check that out. But uh, I, and I, I've watched like the Lego one. Like it's a, oh a Lego. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and uh, the uh, Sunday we were getting ready to go bowling, and my wife was watching uh, this glass blowing, like oh. glass blowing competition. You know, like and they were making amazing stuff, and I was like, I am, I'm watching. Isn't this. that crazy? Yeah. There's a show. It, for it is. It is a game show because each they have challenges. They have to win to keep going. You know, it's just, yeah. They win some money at the end or something. Right. Yeah. Whew. God damn. My eight-year-old daughter loves one on HBO called Craftopia. It's all kids making crafts. Never heard well, of it. Well, there was it's that. real stupid. Uh, the she Amy Poehler and um, what's his name? Nick Offerman. Yeah, they had they had one that, that went for a it, couple seasons. Like build some shit. Yeah, it was like a craft mm-hmm. one kind of thing. It was pretty okay. cool, too. I watched I watched both seasons of it. I haven't even heard of that one. Yeah. It was, it was, it was on, on regular it was television. It like on NBC, yeah. yeah. NBC. WNBC. Fasten your seatbelt, Tim, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Last time you were on here, you click, click. didn't put your seatbelt. Oh, boy. Um, let's see. We talked about a lot up front. We haven't seen Tim in a while. No, we, we missed him. We did miss Tim. Uh, missed you guys, too. Missed well, him. It was funny because uh, Molly's like, well, who's coming over? I was like, Jason and Tim. And she goes, Tim. I go, avocado hat and beard? She goes, <laughs> oh, oh, Tim. Oh, i got to bring back the avocado hat. <laughs> Yeah, this one, my daughter bought me this hat. It's with her own it money. Says, it says Dennis. 
But it looks like penis, doesn't it? So I wear it. I just, it kind of looks like penis. I just, I'm waiting for somebody to say, why does your hat say penis on but it? But does your daughter know your name is not Dennis? Yeah, I was say, what does she that mean? She loves this guy on YouTube named Dennis. He plays Roblox videos. And is this his hat, his logo? Yeah. He plays what videos? I'm sorry. He plays the game Roblox, and then he makes videos with it. I've heard oh, of it. I, I have no idea what it is. Yeah. Uh, so your daughter's like, I love this so much, I'll get you a hat of it. Yep. Okay. It was called a dad hat, and she just thought of me. So what fun. if you got one and designed it yourself to where it actually did say penis and wore that? Do you think she would ever notice? <laughs> no, I can't imagine she would. <laughs> no. Until she's like 18, she's like, Dad, you're a fucking pervert. <laughs> All right. Today we discuss the pilot episode of Second Guessers from the year of our Lord, 1900, add 69, hilarious, great year. <laughs> You're a 1969er girl? Oh, I'm 1969, <laughs> a few of them. Any married ones? <laughs> <laughs> I do feel bad about the married ones. Me too. There was two of them. I, I feel bad about one, mm-hmm. not the other one. Yeah, I feel but, bad that you did them too. I feel does, bad for them. Does that make me an asshole? It takes two to tango, my friend. That's my thing, is this person was... Mm-hmm. Raring to go? Looking for action. and a little rendezvous? Me, to me, uh, n- not my problem, right? Sure. I mean, it could become your problem. <laughs> oh, it did. Sure. It, oh, it did. It oh, did become oh, my problem. Well, now we got to know the end of the story. But I'll tell you what, when you see a girl <laughs> in bib overhauls and a pair of... Oh, oh, hold on a second. All right, go ahead. When you see a girl in bib overhauls <laughs> and uh, low-cut chucks, hair up in a ponytail, I was like... That's... that's mm. And shirt I, under the uh, shirt under the overall? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, all right. She looked way too much like Punky Brewster now that I think about <laughs> oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, she's, she wear a rainbow backpack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Full of dildos. <laughs> bobby socks. Oh, God damn. Yeah, he loves bobby socks. Yeah. You know what a bobby sock is? I do. We've talked yeah. about it on the show. I found a subreddit it's exactly for you, Blake. Did you link? Did you send me the link? Yeah, didn't I? I don't, know. I don't. I think I would have figured that out. It wasn't Bobby. It was like ankle wear or something. But it was close. Oh, enough. There's close ankle enough. wear. Close enough. No, it's not close enough. It needs to be more niche. 19, more niche. More niche. 1969. Right. I was negative uh, six years old. Mm-hmm. Negative ten. Negative twelve. Wow. So, it's so rare anymore than the youngest. This gambit's ever. pretty like this is pretty like a good mixture of age group. Sure. I'm well, I you know, guess. small. Whatever, whatever you say. Small, medium, large. <laughs> okay. Kind of like our can sizes too, right? I got, <laughs> there's, I, there's three different kinds of sizes of cans. I'm drinking oh, some perfect. teeny tiny can, hey, which uh, Tim's got the big truck, the big four by four truck. <laughs> yeah, I completely submit. He's got he's bringing the bringing the heat with the huge cans. Uh, what can I say? A little, little Napoleon syndrome over there. <laughs> is that what it is? He just knows a good deal. <laughs> Stack those two cans up. How how tall is that? Oh, man. Holy Christ! Oh, I'm intimidated. Half a midget high. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's talk about some things that happened in 1969 so we can get a, a better feel and idea of, of the the mindset of the people who made second guessers way back in 1969. And we'll do that by going there. Wait till he's done drinking. I think he wants to yeah, say Yeah, I know. It. In, in our, our minds. minds. Yeah, because you can't, you can't judge this pilot from 1969 based on today's standards. If you want to be fair about it, you're not going to do it that way. Right, yeah. To be fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, in, in think about 1969. There's a lot of things they didn't we didn't have. Right. Uh, Twitter, right? The Me Too movement, yeah. obviously. Uh, women's rights, obviously. Yeah, no the, rights back then. Oh, no rights. I mean, no so abolitionists. We well, you know, it's funny because, uh, and, and, and I'm just... In 1969, this is definitely a year this was going on, but I'm a member of the Moose Lodge, right? Right. And for up until about 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, women couldn't sit at the bar. And uh, the old timers, every once in a while, bring that up. and Like they miss it? <laughs> yes. Like, what, would you say 10 years ago? Yeah. I think 10 or 2011. 2011. Well, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe 15 or so. But, but... There was a time that people remember that that women weren't allowed to sit at the bar. And I was just like, how fucking great would that be? <laughs> Sometimes you go to these like lodges and stuff, and they'll have plaques up, or even in some cases, ornate busts of people, uh, prestigious members of the past. Sure. Get, was, there, uh, was there like a Harriet Tubman or like a uh, Rosa Parks? Of the Moose Lodges who who first sat at the bar and, and has been memorialized in some fashion? Oh, no, no. 
But I that think. is a good that is a good question. Because look, they, they're still hating it. It's gonna be still. like fifty more years, and then they'll start recognizing the. Well, ne- starting in April. Can I answer I, this real quick? Yeah, I, I, he keeps calling me. This is the second time he's called. Hey, this is Jason. What do you want? Uh, I just wanted to know if you were doing a podcast. Yes, I'm doing a podcast. That's why I'm calling. What do you want? Uh, I wanted to interrupt your podcast. Well, you did it. Thank you. What's going Have on? A great night. No, what's going on? Tell me. Do you need something? No, I literally just wanted to interrupt your podcast. I realized it was Monday and was like, I bet Jason's doing a podcast. That's just a thought that popped into my head. So I was like, let's interrupt it. And if I call more than once, he'll probably answer. Well, uh, Blake Clayton's back on the show. You didn't get the job when I called you before. Oh, I thought I got the job. No, you didn't. We, you, I was never serious you about having you on. Me. You made a contract. You said if you broke the contract, you would pay me in some undetermined form. We're we'll have to take this conversation offline. Well... I'll take my payment whenever. It's hey, you know, tell your wife I said hi. <laughs> She'll know what she, she knows what it means. She's Wait. got your payment. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. Good day. Bye. Ask your wife about your payment. That's good. Uh, I, I, I didn't. I, did, I didn't have my glasses on. I didn't have my glasses. Okay. on, so I couldn't see that. Or else he would have vetoed it immediately. He hates him. <laughs> the phone call reminded me. Happy, um, happy to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. Tim. I appreciate. I, I appreciate that. I was fine either way. I'm one of your most loyal listeners. I miss the hell out of you, Blake. I appreciate that. There's there's a few people that reached out and it made me feel nice. Thank you. Yeah, we had people reach out and say, "Hey, what's wrong with that guy?" And we had people say, "Hey, you know what? Uh, Kevin's doing a great job while while Blake is taking a rest." So uh, you know what? Everyone wins except me, who had to keep working the whole time. <laughs> I'm the only one. I never win. So there's that. February 5th of 1969, the controversial television show Turn On premieres on ABC Network in the United States and is canceled after one episode following protests by viewers and ABC affiliate stations. Fact. It, do we have that on the list now? It, you know what? Seriously, I think one of the original producers for that show was interviewed years ago, probably three, four years ago, on Mark Maron's What the Fuck podcast. Okay. And I am programmed. Like, it, probably anytime you hear something related to the challenge, mm-hmm. even if it's just in passing, all of a sudden it clicks on in your brain and you yep. start paying attention. Same thing as this turn on show that was canceled after one episode. I heard that on Marin's podcast. I looked into it. I dug and dug. It's not available. You can't find it. Oh, Do you know man. what it's about? What was so controversial? About it's it? um, I think just kind of a wild variety show in the theme of like, um, oh, what's that one with Goldie Hawn with Richard Nixon laughing. Mm. laughing? It's something like that, but maybe a little bit more provocative or or maybe just very bad. Kind of like uh, uh, the Man Show meets Laughing. Maybe so. Yeah, yeah, it might but be it's something called like Turned that. On. Turn on. Turn on. Do so you yeah. imagine a lot of sex? Probably a lot of innu- yeah, a lot of innuendo, a lot of yeah. uh, phallic fruits and vegetables probably making an appearance on the show. But right. I, I can't find it. Yeah, it, that's a great example. Peaches, cauliflower. If someone in the past would say, "There's going to be a thing called um, emojis, emojis, and one of them will represent a penis," eggplant would probably be like five or six on the list for me. Yeah. But it is it is number one. Yeah. yeah. With a bullet. What would you guys? What's what's you guys' favorite emoji to use as a penis? If if not eggplant, cucumber. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, my yeah. mine's banana just because mine kind of curves a little bit and it's not near as thick. And it's it's like black at the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> at the base, it's black at the base. I'm uh, I'm kind of with uh, with Tim on this one. Mine's zucchini, but but the yellow one because it's got that black part on the end. Uh, February 8th, the <laughs> Allende meteorite explodes over Mexico. Okay. What is that? What's in, what's in outer space? Rocks. Yeah. It's just rocks. It's rocks, dust, and speed. What about like, like trucker speed? No, like... Speed over acceleration? Yeah. Equals time? <laughs> yeah. Squared. Tim, is God in outer space? If that's what you choose to believe, then God can just be whatever wherever you want him to be. Like um, that's as most as I'm willing to commit to that. But like <laughs> but like God could be in this room. Like God could be anything in this room. He's in your heart, Jason. And mm, that's really all that matters. Nice. That's good. Yeah. That's a very safe mm. answer. Very good. <laughs> Did you job. like that one? I loved it. Yeah. Do you think you would lose answers if you gave your true feelings about religion? <laughs> <laughs> Why would he lose answers? I, I mean, listeners. 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 If he oh, gave Jesus I, don't I, think so. I Look, I'm a beer and a half in. Huh, that's more than me. Plus, our listeners are not going to listen to this, guys. You know that by now. Yeah, I know that. We yeah. promote you all the time, and everybody's just like, fuck that. I'm yeah. not going to listen to that. Cares. Like, nah. no. no one cares. No one cares. I don't want to listen to a quality show. <laughs> I'm 26. I'm I'm 26 and watch the challenge. Hey, why would I? 
Why we would... say it every time. I say, no, listen to Couch Pods. It's joke. better than it's better than this show. No. That's very Don't nice. Don't listen to this one anymore. That's very nice of you to say. Um, I always want like every time a meteor comes by, they say uh, we know what this meteor is made out of, and I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? Right. And they're like, if we got up there and drilled it, the the metal on it is worth a trillion dollars. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, how do I'll, they know that shit? What I like is. Uh, uh, this meteor is the size of six football fields mm. and is going to be two thousand and tw- only 2,012 miles away from hitting the Earth. And I'm thinking, how do you measure that how do they know? when they're going that fast? And how do you... What, what's close? What's close to the Earth? I mean... Space is infinite. Really, the dinosaurs are the only ones to know how close is too close. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think so. Is it going to happen someday? Oh, yeah. Something's going to happen. It's inevitable, right? Yeah, it is inevitable. Something's going to happen. It happened once before. We just have to uh, we have to create some sort of space force to protect the Earth, right? Well, thank you, Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's have Steve Carell. Legacy. Steve Carell could be in charge of it. <laughs> Did you watch that show? I watched it. It sucked. It really sucked. I watched the first episode. I, I, I watched, that's all I did is watch the first I watched I couldn't the, hang. I watched the first season. Had, Did you watch um, the whole season? It had Ben wow. Schwartz, right? Ben Schwartz was Yeah, Ben Schwartz good. was in it, and uh, the girl... Uh, Tawny Newsom. N- no, uh, the girl that was uh, from Kim Cattrall. Oh, she was in comedy. She had cancer. She was the blonde girl. Tig Nataro. No, you know what? Never mind. Nicole Kidman. <laughs> Let's just move along. Okay. Uh, finally, February thirteenth, uh, Front de Libération de Quebec terrorists bombed the Montreal Stock Exchange. Hmm. Uh, what, uh, Tim, explain the GameStop situation to me. Oh man, I wish I could. I have no idea. I no this idea. is what I yeah so I gather that some people from Reddit jacked yep. up the price on this like 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 hedge fund a hedge fund right basically mm-hmm. and made like a, a like a a, a seven dollar stock worth like four hundred dollars a piece right and made a whole shit ton of money on it and then went ha ha ha, ha. like fuck you guys yep it's pretty cool can we do that. Can we make a shit ton of money? You can buy GameStop. I bought a couple shares of GameStop today. Just in, just did to you see. really? Yeah, I bought four shares. Um, are they, let's see. Are I, they are they on their way down? Yep, yeah, they're oh, crashing pretty hard. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, they've done nothing but gone down since I bought them. Of okay. course, that's how it works. Well, yeah, and I had I had a, a friend of a friend I know that that did that the night before, you know, yep. and, and and made like six thousand dollars, and then yeah. got rid of it really quick before. Right. You know, because well, he knew what he knew what was going on. Yeah. So you your know? buddy's a smart one. I'm a dumb one. I'm just yeah. gonna hold. Everybody keeps saying to hold, so I'm just gonna hold. See what happens. What's another business that's failing right now that we could um, inflate the price on and make it make it thousands of dollars? Their next one is AMC. They're going after. Oh, that's a good one because yep. yeah, then, the movie theaters are shit right now. Yep. Yeah. And then BlackBerry, they're talking about Blockbuster. Blockbuster is not even a company anymore. No, but I think you can still buy the stock. Really? I think so. To, to what end? What is happening? Mm-hmm. Mine would be Pizza Hut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, but they're making it great. <laughs> Nobody out pizzas them. <laughs> Nobody out pizzas the hut. What a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> so ridiculous, in fact, that I feel like I'm back in 1969. Um, Tim, do you know why we chose to watch Second Guessers? And I'll even throw I'll do this. There's, there's three typical reasons. Yeah. But I will say that there is a fourth reason this season. Yeah, uh, it's available to watch for free. Awesome! It's a pilot that never made it to series, whether it or not is irrelevant. And I know from our conversation before, it's a game show. This guy is on top of it. Nailed it. You're not going to do it better than that. Nailed it. He's Call the, back. He's the Nicole <laughs> Byer of this podcast. <laughs> so the what of the podcast? Nicole Byer. She's the host of Nailed It. Oh, okay. I'll take uh, it. A very, very, very large black woman who... Boisterous. Boisterous. Uh, potty mouth, mm-hmm. and you know what? There's no shame in her game. She loves herself, and that's what I like about her. <laughs> you know what I like about her too is that, uh, like, she has her friends on the show. Like John Gabrus yeah. was on an episode, and yeah. like, uh, wh- what's that curly haired gay l- uh, lady who's a, a comedian? Ellen DeGeneres. No, no, no. She's a she's a big fat lady. Maya Rudolph. No, no, no. she's a white lady. Anyway, she, she's got good. Rosie guests. O'Donnell. No, you guys couldn't be more wrong. Um, who Patrick did, Swayze. Yeah, that's it. You can find the entire episode of Second Guessers by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Tim. And you know what to do, Tim. Don't you think he should use some punctuation? No, I like it. You like it? Yeah. You like to hear him struggle? He's got a little thing going on there. Eventually, one day, he will pass out.
That'd be great. It sure. would be cool. I, the th- I want, I, you know what? Thanks. I'm just going to turn off and just go upstairs and go to bed. <laughs> you I'm not even going to see if he's okay. You got to set some of those cameras up to see that. Let That'd him sleep great. and use your use your uh, your I, watch to monitor me. Yeah, and then I'll take a shit. And you can see that too. <laughs> Somewhere the pilot. Ooh, he ate it. <laughs> I knew he brought with his in- left hand. <laughs> he, brought, he brought instant pudding to the show. I knew he did. <laughs> My wife said no pudding. <laughs> Hosted by comedian Jack Carter, this game involved members of the studio audience trying to guess the answers people on the street, people on the street, uh, would give to cute questions. That's a summary. Yeah. Okay. That described what it was. Yeah. Which I, is, I, I, I don't, don't like cute questions. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Is it accurate though? It's. Do you have to like? I mean, what are you going for when you write these? That that you like the summary, or that it's as accurate as possible? I want one that is sh- short and accurate. How does this fare? Are you gonna grade it? It's a B plus. Well, I was gonna say C, because it's accurate, but nothing special, right? I just it's hate that word. Cute. What would cute. you replace it with? Adorable, cuddly, squishy, scrumptious. I love you. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> fucking interesting facts is what I said. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fucking Interesting Facts. These are facts that Jason has scoured the internet to find. And he's done it with his left hand. Please don't taint someone else's experience by commenting on these. Keep your taint to yourself. Check them out. I do know what hard times are. What's the hardest time you ever had? So many of them. Yeah, you had a lot of hard times in the past. Hard times. Um, interesting facts. As previously mentioned, the show is hosted by Jack Carter. You may know Jack as a comedian. He was in Mel Brooks' History of the World Part 1, the Jack Carter show that aired on Saturday nights on NBC, frequent spots on the Ed Sullivan Show, Dean Martin's Celebrity Roasts, and early incarnations of the Match Game. Match fact. Game. Never heard of this guy. Never heard of him. No. The only reason I ever heard of him is uh, he uh, one of his very last credits before he died. He died at like 93, 95. Oh, wow. Um, in 2014, 15, mm-hmm. he died. And he was, one of his last credits was on the Norm MacDonald podcast, and he, okay. was, he was a guest on there. Okay. He seemed pretty with it, but just did very you check, old. Did you check it out? Oh, I checked it out. I mean, you scoured. <laughs> I scoured. Did he oh, talk yeah. about this? Pilot. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I mean, he no looked word. like a goddamn uh, melted candle. He's like he looked. I mean, he looked like an old man. Looks. You know who looks really bad right now? Bob Newhart. He oh, looks geez. horrible. That motherfucker. He's got to be old. in his eighties or 90s. Oh, no, but 90, he. But he's 90s. ninety. You look at him. If I showed you a picture of him right now, you would. Let, you wouldn't. If I wouldn't have said this is Bob Newhart, you yeah. wouldn't know. Really? Mm. Wow. Because when was this show? Would have been like what mid eighties. Newhart. Yeah. And he was oldish then. He was late fifties, maybe. But, but he, he had two shows, right? Didn't he have like the New Heart show and like the bot? There's like two different shows, and yeah, and at the end of the after him. at the end of the second one, they played it like it was a dream from of the first one or something, right? Yep, mm-hmm. it's just it's just kind of clever, I guess. I don't know. Bob Newhart, uh, what what a what a talent! But God, he's old as shit. <laughs> was it, it was just Conan just did a Conan just interviewed him like recently did he? And I was just like, oh my god, what is going on with you? Mm-hmm. He what looked, he looked all right in Elf, but the more I think about it, Elf was like fucking twenty years ago. Look, at, it doesn't it doesn't even look like Bob Newhart, uh, really. It doesn't. It looks like if someone wrapped a human skeleton in the skin. <laughs> yeah, it, Bob Newhart I, skin. I, yeah, yeah, he he gone. Kind of like that is how uh, Bob Barker looks, except he's got a, a shock of white hair instead of that. Isn't he dead now? No, Bob 90, Barker? ninety-seven. You keep oh, talking wow. about him, you're screwing him. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to do it so much that it brings it back around where he's going to go for another 10, 12 oh, okay. years. I got Who's you. better, Bob Barker or Drew Carey? Mm. I gotta go, Bob. Bob. Mm. He's just he's just American classic, but Drew is very good. Even though he looks like a fucking maniac right now, have you seen him? <laughs> no, he's got like a huge beard. It's like that that doesn't play no. on CBS and, and eleven does, a.m. He, he doesn't wear his glasses anymore because he had like the LASIK surgery. So you gotta get he, fake glasses, man. He doesn't look nerdy anymore. He just yeah. looks like a creepy ass motherfucker. He even, got real skinny too, didn't he? I think he's put some back on. But even okay. as tr- trim Drew, shave the face. And then get the glasses yeah. on. You it's can still make... Yeah. Yes, that's his signature, baby. Yep. Uh, interesting facts. The reporter out on the streets asking the questions was Jack Clark. He was an American television personality, game show host, and announcer. He's best known for hosting The Crosswits and as an offstage announcer for Password and Wheel of Fortune. Facts. Wheel of Fortune. Uh. 
Is that the Wheel of Fortune song? Yeah, right? I think so. I, earlier when we asked you what your favorite game show was, I thought you were going to say that because of Vanna I, White. I hate Wheel of Fortune. You hate Wheel of Fortune because I can't spell. I don't. Ooh. I don't know what those. I don't like it. it like it. It doesn't do anything for me. What about Jeopardy? You like Jeopardy? No, I'm not smart enough. I'm not smart enough either. No. I don't like Jeopardy. Did you guys hear that? Uh, I don't want one where I have to think. Really, yeah. I mean, like, like I want to see right. a bunch of bells and whistles. You know, yeah. I, yeah. mostly luck driven. Oh, I love luck. Right, like um, luck be a lady. Deal or deal or no deal was probably your favorite one, right? Because you just pick cases. Yeah, that's that, was, that was fun. Well, that got kind of boring. Yeah, yeah. There was no, there wasn't a lot of strategy. There was a little bit, obviously, but not you know. Yeah, it but, seems like Deal or No Deal, you watch two episodes, and it's like, yeah, I, like, I got it. it. I don't need any more of this. How we put, how we grow some hair, we're, we're fine. <laughs> you know, he will, uh, he won't touch you because he's got a yeah. but I, I also heard that at parties, he'll just grab popcorn out of a bowl where everyone's grabbing. Yeah. Really? And then when confronted about it, he says, I'm I'm crazy. That's It doesn't have to make sense. I'm nuts. Right, right. Which is probably accurate. Yeah. He's probably doing fine in the age of COVID, though, right? Oh, I'm sure he's He's been great. fist bumping for years. Hell yeah. He's, he's doing well. Yeah. Uh, the celebrity guest on this episode was Brenda Vaccaro, who is still alive today. Uh, you may recognize her from Midnight Cowboy, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Johnny Bravo. Fact. The cartoon? Yeah. Did a voice? She was Bunny Bravo. Oh. Which the I, new Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the Quentin Tarantino special, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't Mi- seen it. Mining, well, I'm just mining from the past. Right. Like, who the fuck's making a movie in 1997 with goddamn... Uh, Pam Greer, <laughs> yeah, you know Jackie Brown's a great movie, and she was awesome in it. And like fucking John Travolta for Pulp Fiction, that dude's yeah. career was dead for five years at that yeah, point. He re- revived the career. Yeah, that's that's Crazy. the Tarantino special. Mm-hmm. Uh, was taped in Miami Beach, Florida. Fact: uh, the theme song had previously been used on The Face Is Familiar. Fact, which I can only assume is a game show that I've never heard of. Before. Yeah. Uh, just before signing off, Carter states that uh, the guest next week will be Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. What's was, the, there's two, touch on that. two Gabors, right? What was the other one's oh. name? Lucinda? I was going to say Ivanka, but I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the Trump world. I don't know. Zsa Zsa was from Green Acres, right? Okay, yeah. But there was another one. Or e- Ava. Ava Gabor. Ava, Ava, Ava. Right? That sounds right. Were they both beauties? Were they, were they from like Eastern Europe, Europe, right? They had the, that act, like Austrian accent were. or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, fact. <laughs> uh, did not uh, air when originally made, but has since appeared on the Game Show Network and is on the trading circuit. And the trading circuit, I can only imagine, is some sort of weird and even pathetic underground network of uh, VHS uh, <laughs> tapes collected by odd folks in basements. Fact. It says the guy who collects bottle caps. I, you know what? That was a period of my life. <laughs> the period's over. Just saying. Your period's Everybody's over? Aw. Have... Yeah, needs hobbies. I've, I've hit menopause. <laughs> All right? Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. Can't do it. No, everyone's dead except that one lady, uh, but she didn't respond. I don't think she tweets, but she's got a Twitter. That Brenda Vaccaro. When was her last tweet? Uh, I I scrolled down, and it didn't like that, look like there were any tweets. It didn't mm-hmm. look like they were protected. But it looked like she just like someone probably said you should get on Twitter and then she said, I'll get on it. The end. <laughs> no, that, that's in my mind. How I imagine. It to be. But let's go ahead and put ten minutes on the clock and let's break down this um, this this what twenty six twenty eight minute yeah. pilot of mm-hmm. Second Guessers. Blake, you look like you're raring to go. I'm raring to go. We are have a live remote. That's Jack Clark, not of the Cardinals, but a, a different Jack Clark. And uh, foreshadow. We'll talk about him next week. Um, he is at the Miami Airport and the Sea Aquarium in Florida, and he is going to be asking random questions or questions to the cute people. questions. Cute yeah. ones. The audience is over a thousand people. That's that's a lot for a pilot episode of a game show mm-hmm. in the early time of television. There's a thousand people, and they clap for an hour <laughs> when Jack Carter is introduced. I mean, they clap forever. He was a known dude back then. People probably liked that he was uh, there and were excited. And this isn't like Hollywood. It's just Miami, Florida. Yeah, it's, just, a it's, lot of... it, it's like a, a casino or like a like a theater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's, you know, Florida was big back then for... Okay. Yeah. Smaller now. Well, I mean, like... Global warming. The, yeah, the sea rise, levels rise. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, Jack introduces uh, Brenda. What did you say her name was? Vaccaro. Okay, I wrote McCarl. So. Mick Carl. <laughs> yeah. So let's just do this. The premise of the game is that they're going to ask Brenda a, qu- uh, a question. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Jack Carter's the reporter. Or no, Jack Carter's the host, and Jack Clark is the reporter. Right. He's the like street. the man on the street. Yeah. Yes. And he, uh, they're going to say, hey, uh, Brenda, we're going to ask five people this question. What do you, is their answer going to be yes or no? For mm-hmm. the most part, right. Mm-hmm. I will say too that the, the visual quality is very bad on this pilot. And very the, wa- yeah, blown out. The audio seems to be like there's a like a constant buzzing too. I got used yeah. to that for a few minutes, but right away it was just very shocking how awful it was. Yeah, brought back some good nostalgia though. You'd see those lines that VCRs used to have, you know, right. those like striped lines. And Why stuff. do we have nostalgia for garbage? I don't know. <laughs> I really do though. You know, I used to pause it and it would like shutter on the oh, screen yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. thinking of that. Like it was like the VCR was holding its breath or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, you know, they had five people and they had one question. So Brenda would say they're going to say yes, they're going to say no. And then they would pick somebody from the audience and says, do you agree with Brenda that they're going to say yes or do you think they're going to say no? And if you're right, if you, you're right, you get a prize. Yeah. And that's the second guesser. That's the, the second, audience. Yes. yes. Yeah. That, the audience Correct. is filled with a thousand second mm-hmm. guessers. And do you guys think that the, what Jack Clark was doing, the man on the street, do you think that was all pre-taped? I I do think so. Okay, but there was one time. I obviously technical technology wise, probably. But there was one toward the end where, like, they went to Jack Clark, and it seemed like he didn't know they were there. And then somebody's like, "Hey, you know, oh, you're, I don't, you're I don't on. remember that." Okay, it was the one where uh, before he asked about, uh, "Would you da- would you go on a date with Jack Carter?" Oh, the very okay. end. Okay, yeah. So. It did seem like, but you can't be into you can't go to the airport and the sea aquarium. Oh, right? So obviously point. it is. I think what it was was I think the aquarium was pre-taped and maybe just maybe the uh, airport was was live. Live. It was 1969. And you I mean, they already went to the moon. The, I mean, we always think this is the golden age of America. Everything is so wholesome. There's there there might have been guys that would jumped on camera when Jack Clark was asking questions. who would say, "Suck my cock, <laughs> fucking suck my cock." You can't have that be live. You can't. Te- you can't. You can't How was that again? Suck my cock. Okay, I just want to be able to fucking suck my cock. I do it. I was thinking too. Just, I mean, it's, this is a pilot. You make it as cheap as you can, right? Right. That's yeah. True. And it's got to be cheaper to to record it first. But I would imagine it would be. But who knows? Too bad that lady didn't tweet you back and answer that question. I would have told her that to suck my one. cock if she did. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the first question, because it's a, a little bit of a stage. Jack uh, Carter's up there. He's talking to Brenda. He said, here's the first question. Um, would would a wife forgive her husband if he was unfaithful? Yeah. And so she has to answer yes or no. Out of five. Mm-hmm. Out what, of five. Yes. She said yeah, well, yeah. more than three. Yes. Yeah, the, the majority of five. And uh, she says yes, right? Nope. She said no. No, I'm sorry. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm but she kind right. of she was hedging her bets against this one too because she justified it by saying, "I think they'll say no, but I think they would actually stay." Uh, yeah, I think she was like, "I think they'll say no because women's circumstances are different, or something like that." Yeah. But meaning, hey, she's pregnant and doesn't have a job. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. for How sure. She's gonna live by herself. Yeah. And yeah, so she so so she says, "No, I don't think that they'll they'll say that they'll leave their unfaithful husband." Right. And so they go to the the audience member who, like you said, Tim, was the second guesser. Do you remember that person's name? I think I wrote it down. Uh, Judy. Judy is That's, the second guesser. And do you remember what she could win? Yes. Um, color TV. Color R- RCA TV. RCA makes yeah. the best tube television. Oh, yeah, for sure. Fucking fancy. You think it was the council one that sits on the floor? Oh, oh yeah. weighs 700 yeah. pounds and has <laughs> a radio and uh, yes. 8-track player yes. on the other side of it. Tunes into VHF and UHF. Right. Hell yeah. Super fancy. Gotta get them both. R.I.P. So um, they go uh, They go to Jack Clark, man on the street, and the first lady says no, right? Mm-hmm. And then the second lady says no, and the third one says... <laughs> I'd kill him. Well, well, is that the... Okay, I thought the third lady was like, I'll, I'd stay with him, but I'd make the rest of his life miserable. Okay, yeah, 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 which right, sounds yeah, like yeah. every relationship I've ever right. been in. I feel like I've been on second guessers. <laughs> And then the last one was like, yeah, I, w- I, w- I think she said, like, I wouldn't leave him, but I wouldn't forgive him or something. Yeah, right. So th- some, in some cases, he doesn't ask five people because he gets to three of the same answer before sure. then. Right. And if it's the majority of five, then that's it. Uh, the second round. Okay, so she, you know, they, they win the, the RCA TV. They guessed right. Yep. Uh, second round is, uh, has your husband, 
it, it, I'm asking five peop, five women, since you've been married, has your husband gained weight? Of the five, will they total 100 pounds? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Brenda's like, yeah, of course, you know, a bunch of fat mm-hmm. fuckers. And, and they did. And uh, the audience member was going to win a, a camera, a movie Video camera. camera. Bell and Howell, yeah. classic. Bell and Howell. Her name was Deborah. I thought it was Roberta Fishman. It might have been Deborah, though. <laughs> but she agreed. She said, yes, sure. I think that is the case, that they will uh, accumulate more than 100 pounds. Right. Um, the first two are ladies, and I think uh, Jack Carter comments on both of them. Oh, right. Yes, about how beautiful they are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's super creepy. Yeah, he, he loves super. pretty girls. He loves he <laughs> loves pretty girls, and I think it dawns on him about halfway through the show. Oh, I got this really pretty girl who's standing next to me, and I'm gonna grab her by the hand and squeeze it and hold it the whole time. I'm going to oh, hold I didn't catch you, this. Well, oh my God. I didn't catch it to the end, but you're right. I think it's, he was doing it for a long time because the visuals was so bad that it was like really light yeah. on the screen where he was holding mm. your hand, but you could see it. Yeah. They were yeah. holding hands and it was, it was clearly like him who initiated yes, it. Was, it. Yeah. It, you could tell if, if two people are holding hands or yeah. if one person's holding someone else's <laughs> yes, hand, you right. can tell the difference. Right. So uh, the first lady, uh, basically all ladies said yes. They're all, they're all packing on the weight. And what's funny, too, is like they come across a handful of people that are like, I've been married for three days. Right. That's pretty yeah. dumb luck, isn't it? A lot of people like that, yeah. The fifth woman here says that her husband gained 10 pounds in seven days. Yeah, how the hell? <laughs> Holy shit. What is shit? she feeding him? That's, that's fucking she crazy. got him pregnant. <laughs> Those are the days when people go to the store, they just buy like a, a 10-pound thing of lard. Right. <laughs> right. Crisco. Yeah. So, yeah, one says 15, one says uh, he's uh, he gained 10 pounds, and one lady was like, <laughs> she was like probably 50 years old. Like, I've been married for 45 years. He's gained 55 pounds. Right. And you know it was more than that. It was more than that for oh, sure. Oh, that guy, that guy was a tank somewhere. Um, yeah, but it did accumulate to 100 pounds exactly. exactly. Oh, yeah. what a miracle. That lady bull- was bullshit about the 10, day, 10 pounds in seven days there. Part of my problem with the well, show. Yeah. Because he said something about, oh, we 10 more pounds to go. Mm-hmm. And then he asks her and said, yeah, for yeah. sure. So um, the next one, they won that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a camera. Uh, it weighs 100 pounds, and you have to put it over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so the next question, the men are being asked this time, does your wife know your income? Now, this is a perfect time stamp of 1969. Right. Nowadays, if they ask this question, the answer would be completely different as a majority. You think I would everyone think. would say yes? Oh yes. Molly, yes. Molly knows your salary. Yes. You guys share a bank account. Yes. Okay, that's a good, that's a good question because some of these can be applied to you guys who are both married fellas. So you say <laughs> yes, Blake, Tim. Yeah, we share a bank account, and she so she sees ex- very she can see exactly monitors. what's going. Yep. <laughs> very yeah. closely. Oh, she my does God. not monitor how much I you know the pre tax stuff mm-hmm. so i put more into the 401k than she knows i do okay that's Ooh. my big secret what a rebel i know she does hope, she does listen to the show i hope <laughs> nobody sends her a link to this episode with a time stamp <laughs> one hour two minutes <laughs> Uh oh. um but yeah so uh it's basically asking five people again five uh fellas and uh brenda says brenda the celebrity guest uh, says no the women will not know and so they go, they take it to the streets. The uh, audience member's name is Harry, and he agrees with Brenda. And he's going to win a silver tea <laughs> a set. Tea and set. Brenda, yeah. even Brenda's like, that's a shitty gift. That's a <laughs> shitty prize. She makes fun yeah. of it at least twice. Oh, yeah. And, and, and once after, after he wins yeah. it. Yep. So well, they take it to the streets, and the first one says no, right? The second one says no. Third one says yes. Fourth one says yes. They take it all the way to the fifth one. They say no. Mm-hmm. So Harry gets his tea set. Hell yeah, Harry gets well his done, tea Harry. set. Well done, Harry. I just <laughs> good job. But I mean, like there was a couple of these husbands where I was like, no way, no way does she know? Yeah. And I was just like, that's this. It seemed odd, yeah. you know, being in 2021. It just seems odd that a guy would be like, yeah, she don't have a fucking idea. You're right. And I'm not. T- and one guy was like, and I'm not telling her. I was like, whoa, yeah. okay, dokey. There's some very revealing things <laughs> said about relationships. <laughs> and in the then show. one, this one guy, like the shortest guy, like. Yep, she's in charge of the money. I give her my check, and she puts yeah. it in the bank every <laughs> week. And you know the other guys were like, you fucking pussy. pussy. Yeah, I shed a tear for that guy. Uh, they do two commercial breaks. He throws it to commercial twice, Jack does. And each time he says, here is a message of interest. Yeah. I thought, that was, I thought it was oddly I was, phrased. It was oddly phrased, but I thought it was, it was different. Yeah. yeah. 
He, he was trying to coin some phrases maybe during this show. Now, when he comes back from the break, the next question is, if you guys were married again, you fellas, would you marry the same girl? Right. And so uh, Brenda is thinking it over, and she says, I bet that guys will say yes. Because I, he was like, he's like, she's like, I think they'll probably see it on TV. The wives yes. will see it, yep. and they'll definitely say yes. That's just a logical decision it, about, about people seeing it on TV. Yes, of course you would yes. say yes. But you also have to think in, you know, in 2021, you can watch that on TV anytime. It's going to be on YouTube. Mm-hmm. This is maybe aired once and then never again. True. So yeah. maybe they could get off scot free. Or in this, take, take their wives out to dinner and not mention in, it. In this case, uh, never aired. Yeah. But it is on the trading circuit and on <laughs> GSN, Game Show Network. And of course, we're talking about it. Now. Right. So uh, they get a. Uh, so when one of these wives listens to us. Yeah, yeah. She's right. going to be pissed, man. If Tim's they're wife doesn't listen to this, why would anybody else listen? They're all, everyone's dead. The whole audience is dead. Yeah. Every, it's so long ago. The audience member they get now is Don. And Don's like, yeah, I agree with you. Everyone seems to be agreeing with Brenda. Sure. And it says, uh, Don, if you get it right, you get a cruise to Nassau. Yeah, a three-day cruise. Which seems like a better prize than everyone else, easily. I was thinking to myself, because that's how I refer to myself, by this time of the show, I was like, this guy's got the best prize of all. Mm -hmm. If I'm Harry before, I was like, a fucking tea set? What? (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) They could have gone to Nassau? So they take it to the streets, and then... uh, Take it to the streets. They got, uh, they're going to ask five people unless they get the three answers that are the same first. And the first guy says, no, I would not marry the same and lady. He, he, <laughs> he didn't hesitate at all. Not a bit. Man. Right away. I'm like, what? And the next guy is like, no, I probably wouldn't. And the guy's like, and Jack Clark's like, well, where's your wife? He's like, oh, right back here behind me. <laughs> keeping her mouth shut like she's supposed to. Jack Clark kind of sets it up, too. He's like, um, tomorrow you wake up. You're a bachelor. No strings attached. Yep. But uh, well, you know, I'd probably celebrate. She'll go party yeah. for a while. Said that. I would uh, like these other guys. I'd probably celebrate. <laughs> Jack Lux, you want to hang out with this guy? I got to hang out with them. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them were saying, I wouldn't get married again, which obviously mm-hmm. they're just talking shit because. This is around the dudes. Yeah. That, again, yeah. that's part of my. Well, they can do it more, but that's part of my problem with the show. The third guy says, you know what? I would. I would marry the same girl again. Fourth guy says, no. You got three no's, it's over. That's it. They ended it right there. No cruise. No cruise. Whew. But Poor as a consolation prize, you're getting a case of champagne. Ooh. <laughs> Which is, is, again, better than a tea set. Well, how many bottles is in a case of champagne? 12? 100, 150. <laughs> big, big, beautiful cases. I I laughed out loud with these guys answering, no, I would not marry the same lady. I, was la- I, I could not believe that these guys would do that. It's ridiculous. Right. Someone's going to see that. Even if it did air only once back then, someone's going to see right, it, yep. and you're going to get told on. Grandma, get Grandpa said he would never marry you again. <laughs> Next question is, say, we're going to ask five uh, married ladies the same question, except this time, it's not only would you marry the same guy, but would you marry them at the same time right. in your life? This question was needlessly complicated. Yeah, they, it was, they, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then Brenda is like, you know what? No, I don't think they would. Because she's smart. But a smart lady. So they go to audience member Jerry, another cute young lady that, uh, what's that? The, the Jack Carter oh, just yeah. lusts over, talking about how beautiful she is and how well she's dressed. And, oh, God. God go, oh, to be Jack Carter. You need to watch this, as a listener, you need to watch this just for Jack Carter and his blatant, like... Sexism is running rampant. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, Louis C.K. is nothing compared to Jack Carter... Jack, you, I, I bet if, Jack Carter jacked no, off into a lot of ficuses back in the day. If you, if you flip them time period wise, mm-hmm. Jack Carter's oh, oh just yeah. worse probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a lot. You of tell b- me he. You tell me Jack Carter didn't rape somebody. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and besmirch the name of Jack. You know, look Carter. me in the eyes and say that he probably didn't rape somebody. Like, like turn to me. Edit this out, but yeah, he definitely. Right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. It's always one of the point to be made. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and, and have that heard. Okay, I don't want to hear about that. Uh, so Jerry is the member from the audience who's the second guesser. She agrees, and what is, what is she gonna win? Do you know, uh, Tim? she's gonna uh, let Tim answer it. Radio and tape player. Let, let fucking Tim answer it. You gotta quiz me on my notes, right? Make sure I have good enough notes yeah, yeah. for the. You came in with show. notes. I did three pages, man. I just want to make sure it wasn't all about two girls, one cup. <laughs> Only half of it. And 
The third page is the recipe for <laughs> grilling up a baby. Oh, good lord, Tim! <laughs> Yikes! He's like, well, I took the notes anyway, so if you guys want them, I'm I mean, going back in my recipe card. I mean, I, I don't know what you guys are into. I'm but... just gonna throw them away. <laughs> Xerox copy of 14 copies of this. I've got to do something with it. <laughs> On the street, Jax is asking people, and the lady says, yes, I would marry the same guy at the same time. The second one says yes. The third one says no. Fourth one says no. We got a tiebreaker. Which way does it go, Blake? No way, Jose. No way. And a lot of... Uh, it doesn't really count, because two of the three that said no said no, I wouldn't when I did, right. like, at my age. I married so the same guy. You know time. they got pregnant. And one of them even says I married him very young, which yeah. in yeah. 69 is, uh, my, 16. My, my dad ma- my dad made me marry this guy because he fucking knocked me up. Yeah. Well, it was also, she said she'd only been married for three years. So it's like, oh, I yeah. married him too young. Well, it's only three years later. Aren't yeah. you still too young? Yeah. Yeah, the, my, next, hey, my next note. Oh, you're sorry. always too young to fall in love. My next note here says, let's ask Tim and Blake this fucking question. Uh-oh. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. I forget What's what it was. I'm trying to figure it out here. Well, do you? Would you guys? If you if you go back in time, would you uh, oh. marry the same lady? No. The same? You, you really? You honestly don't have to answer, but no. you already did. <laughs> okay. You wouldn't. You wouldn't marry Molly. No. No. I'd marry Molly. <laughs> and, th- and that's how he got out of the question. That's very good. And Jesus is in your heart, right, Tim? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> I'm the master of avoiding the question entirely. And your heart is shaped like a heart. Uh, next question: The reporter. Uh, asked uh, girls if at least one of five girls would go out with Jack. Yeah, this it seemed like this was like you knew this was coming up to be like the bonus, like the ending question. Yeah, like, and I thought, I was like, I don't know, like how popular Jack Carter was at the time, mm-hmm. and I thought this is very self indulging. Yeah. Like Jack Carter said, the last question. You're going to ask five girls if they go on a date with me because everybody knows me because I'm Jack Carter. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna jerked get, off in a fern. I'm going to get five yeses. I'm going to bang all these Right, I'm going to look so good in front of Brenda. I'm going to have sex with Brenda in front of the Stingray exhibit <laughs> at the Sea Aquarium. Yeah, that was my impression, too. It was, it was a masturbation. Right? Yeah. This was just very self Ego driven for sure. Stupid shit. So, again, they're going to ask five girls, but they only need one yes, they say on this. One hard yes that they will go out with Jack. And Brenda says, you know what? One out of five, I bet one of them will say yes. And then she goes, well, I don't know if it was before the question or after the question. And she's like, I'd go out with you, Jack. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, don't tell him that. He's already fucking been clawing your fucking hand for 15 <laughs> your minutes. Your left hand's broken in three <laughs> you're, spots, you're, right? <laughs> you're, and he even, during this show, he even makes a comment, like it was, maybe it was around this or a little bit earlier, and, and points out the fact that there's a barrier between the two of them, otherwise they would be even closer. Mm. Like a wooden, you know, like a, you know. Right. And just so we're clear on this, as much sexism, sexism as there is, no girl appears to be completely off-put. I, I, no, I, think, I think it's just a yeah. sign of the times... Oh, yeah. And women kind of accept that behavior, especially sure. good-looking mm-hmm. ladies like they had on the show. Yeah. So it didn't feel like, especially at the time, I'm sure people didn't think, oh, he's crossing a line, and he's probably oh, sure. raped a bunch right. of ladies, like Blake said. <laughs> but, I mean, the truth is, I mean, today, that would not be acceptable right. at all. Yeah. Anyway. So they, again, they go to the street. First of all, they get audience member Dina, or Dinah, I think it was. Yes, and, and Jack Dinah. hits on her the most, oh. if you ask me. And um, he uses the phrase, I don't know if you guys caught this, he uses the phrase here, that's close enough for jazz. Have you I, heard of that phrase before? No, but I kind of like it. I thought so, I too. I knew what he meant. I, I think maybe it. this is when he says something about the partition between him and Brenda. Okay. I think. Well, what's wh- I, I'm trying to use context clues for what that means, and you said you like that phrase. What do you think that means, Tim? Well, jazz is like not an accurate music uh, genre, basically. Like, There's no... You don't get notes on how to play jazz. It's sort of free flowing, improv, free flowing, kind of go yeah. with the flow. So I think that's what it's, like, it's close enough. It's and like he, it's like horseshoes and hand grenades. Close counts. I think right. you're right. And also, I think also like uh, dancing to jazz, people will get real close. It's... Mm. Jazz cigarettes too, right? <laughs> Are you all right? You've totally crumbled. <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> well, no. I was just thinking of something. All right, that's fine. Um, so uh, Dinah agrees with Brenda that one of the ladies will agree to it, and then she will win four pieces of Samsonite. I tell you what, man, if I if I was any of those other people who didn't get the cruise, I'd be angry. <laughs> yeah, 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 the cruise should just carry on. The dude didn't win it; it should just right. it yes. should keep exactly. going until somebody does. There should be, there should be levels of prizes. Yeah, always. And, Every game show, good game show, has level of prizes. Mm-hmm. These guys are just walking up randomly and like, oh, we're going to pick this because you know. 
Yeah, Luggage it's like uh, the cruise. It's, it's almost as if they knew and set up what they were going to say and they were going to. But yeah, maybe so. Uh, back on the streets, Jack uh, Clark is asking around, and the first lady. Actually, a lot of the ladies seem to have a similar answer, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. I don't know who yeah, he is. Who is this guy? Yeah. They're like, they're like, I don't know. And maybe if like you introduce yeah, me, maybe yeah. if one, I one girl's like, well, how old is he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, that's the last. Everyone says no except the last. La- the last lady kind of gives the same answer, but then. Uh, Jack Clark's really like trying to get a yes out of him. Sure. He's like, he's uh, he's twenty seven. He's clearly not twenty seven. He's probably like what late forties, yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. yeah. Lie about his age. So then they take that last one as a yes, and then this this is where I notice that Jack has really oh, got that the kung fu grip uh-huh. on that broad's hand. Yeah, and he throws it to a last commercial, uh, another me- message of interest, as it were. And, um, and then that's the end of the show. Yeah, right? they come back and he just says his goodbyes and then says, you know, Nick, tune in next week and we have Jaja Jack Gabor. Yeah. As our next guest. Do you think that's bullshit? Did, did, did they really line up Zsa Zsa Gabor in case this was picked up? Oh, yeah. I, she was backstage because they're going to tape more than one in a day. So, you think so? Yeah. They, you, they so were, do, you th- do you think more were taped, maybe? I, I would say that. It, I can't see how any of these would be set up and only one was going to be made. Because to the writers, to the producers, they're like, we, you know, we got to have five in the can because we're going to get picked up. So I'm, Zsa Zsa was back drinking martinis, already half shit-faced. Mm-hmm. Probably petting a little dog of some kind. <laughs> Does this fit the Couch Pilots criteria if there was more than one recorded? No, we don't. We don't, that's not one of the pillars. We don't know. Okay. Uh, for for I remember way back when we did a Heil, a Honey, I'm Home. It's mm-hmm. a, a, the Adolf Hitler co- comedy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a cliche, but an Adolf Hitler comedy. <laughs> um, and then we talked to one of the ladies that was on it, and she was like, uh, I was like, oh, there was uh, you know six more made." And it was like, can we? we uh, where do you see him? She's like, oh, I'll never tell. And like, she's basically saying she knows she has access to him or whatever. So sure. sometimes it does happen that we find out later that more were made. If I mm. if I find out up front that something is five six episodes and maybe it wasn't all aired, I stay away from it. But sometimes it's a surprise, right. and, and yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if a bunch were made all at once. That's how game shows are usually done. Right? Mm. Yeah, game shows they do six to ten in a day. Yeah, right. yeah. I've heard Drew Carey before uh, before say, you know, like we'll record like three or four in a day. And then we'll do that every day for a week. And then I got like three weeks off of work. Right. That's the fucking life right, right? there, man. And he goes and stands around with a bunch of hot ladies yeah. with a, a very long and curiously thin uh, microphone. Yeah. And and no rehearsals, no scripts to memorize. Yes. You just fucking show right. up and talk for a minute and, and then you go home. Yes. Oh, man. Go home to your carry. sex doll and own part of the Seattle <laughs> Sounders. I mean, who, who wouldn't want that? A little bit sex doll. Please remain seated as we are I've heard stories about Drew Carey. Right? Really? I love Drew. I personally love Drew Carey. I think he's great. Tim, why did not uh, second guessers work? You know, I'm not sure. I, looking at it through the prism of 2021, it's very sexist and weird. But back then, that didn't matter, and it had a lot of celebrities, like a lot of people that you know maybe I should have known back then. So I really don't know. I have no idea. It seems like it should have been popular. Yeah, go for it, Blake. It uh, <laughs> seems like you have notes on it, some thoughts, right? Sure. I just to me, this wasn't a game show from. You know, the stand, what, what is a really a game show? This isn't really, to me, it was more of like this entertainment uh, uh, bloopers kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's just, like it, Bill Cosby's uh, Kids Say the Weirdest, yeah. Funniest Thing. It wasn't really whatever. a game show. Uh, the contestants you have are just people that you pull out of the audience. Yeah. They just have to answer one word, yes yep. or no. Yep. And they get... And it's really a, a very biased. It can be pre-taped and stuff. It's not questions that yeah. people can get wrong. Um, and man on the street bits are popular, but in it seems like sort of short segments, right? Sure, five minutes, maybe a half hour doesn't work. But and, and and if if they were just like having a show where they were like did a did a man on the street and they're like, oh, we're gonna ask ten people, blah blah blah, they would be even. I think they would be more entertaining. But when you're like you know Brenda, and then you got another guy, another person. Are they going to say yes or no? It just, it takes away from, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I think that uh, all the people being asked the same question in a group and in succession, right. it, it sways the, the people's answer. For sure. The perfect example is what you mentioned. It's like, it's only 10 more pounds is what we need. Did your husband gain 10 pounds? He mm-hmm. gained exactly 10 pounds. Well, you know, that, right. that, Come on. like with the whole, uh, you know, the men and the women with Marion, would you marry them again? Mm. 
you know, it, the first guy goes, this, no. So all the guys are like, <laughs> oh, shit, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't right. say yes, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I fuck that bitch, you know. Yeah. I like the premise and like, but like, just just, just get people one on one. Yeah, and then separate you, them. Then you go, you walk over here 50 feet with the camera crew, you find some other person, you ask them separately, one at a time. I, got, th- I think that's better. You got to keep them separated. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's like what Family Feud does, right? They just come back with the answers. You don't see the, the people being pulled. Right. You just oh, see right. At the, the end of the show, where they the final thing where they have the. Yeah. yeah I think you so. You just know yeah. who, what they answered. You don't need to have to see them. Yeah. And then um, also something I mentioned too is two Jacks may have been a problem. And both JC, Jesus Christ, uh, Jack Carter and Jack Clark. Two yeah. Jacks might be a problem. Confusing. Go, go by Jack Clark's middle name or something. Or you they got to get a Jack off. Yeah, get one of those jacks off. Pretty funny. Get it. Or do a split, double down. His this was a little better. I'm sorry. Sorry, man. I mean, it was right there. One of us just had to hit it first. <laughs> Yours was good. Yours was good, Blake. It's fine. Keep that chin up, Blake. All right, final descent. This is where we uh, talk about where other people have seen this. And, and honestly, it's, it's not really out there. I usually ask Blake... Um, what he thinks people from around the world have rated this uh, show. But the answer is, it's I can't even find it on IMDb. That's great. <laughs> it is great. Can't you interject <laughs> yourself in the trading circles and get some input from the trading circles? I would love, if only I had the right hookups. I think I gotta be just, a, I, I, I don't know how to do that. Do you guys know how to insert yourself into an underground circuit like that? No. Blake? I'm gonna say no. When's the last time you've been inserting reason. yourself in, into something? Underground or otherwise? Is my own hand count? Mm-hmm. Right or left? Oh, it's... <laughs> um, it's obviously not on Rotten Tomatoes either. There is a critic review, and this is going to be from a website that I think we're going to be mining a lot of information from GameWise Show going forward, and that's usgameshows.net. They say they asked six questions, and that was the game. I think we only saw five. Five. But uh, maybe there's a version uh, on the underground circuit <laughs> where there's six. Uh, we, and that was the game. Nothing else. No bonus game. No final question. No yeah. competition between various members of the audience. This concept can work if it's done well, as in Street Smarts, another show I'm, I'm not familiar with. Mm-hmm. And even the show is supposed to be a weekly primetime affair. I doubt they could get a thousand person audience week after week. If you look in the picture gallery to the right, uh, which is on the website, of course, uh, some members of the studio audience couldn't even sit through the credits they wanted to get out of there so bad, which, I mean, you can see the gallery there or you can see the YouTube clip. And, and I, I had read this before and I did notice during the credits, some people were getting up to leave. Yeah. So maybe they did want to get out of there quickly. But touched on something you said earlier, Blake, is that there was no kind of structure for points or it was just a yes or no answer. Right. And how do we, we don't even know how they draw an audience member to come up. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, they're, they're not wearing a hot silly, They're not. They're not wearing a silly costume. Uh, they didn't say there's a, everybody's got a number yeah. or there's a thing underneath your seat. You know, mm-hmm. nothing like that. But aren't we supposed to be looking at this through the lens of 1969? Did they do this stuff in 1969? Oh, they did all this stuff, like the final showdowns and shit like that. Yeah, sure they did. Okay, we, I, I, we, we, maybe so. Yeah, no. they've had game shows where there was. I think they definitely had game shows. But, well, but the, 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 there's game shows that like. You had to go from level to level to make more. But Tim does bring up an interesting point because no, really early on in uh, <laughs> fuck off, man. Er, early well early on well, we've talked. He's got about a this. penis on his hat for Christ's <laughs> sake. He brings up a good point. Oh, I'm just saying that the early on in yeah. in, uh, in in television they were just throwing things at the wall to see what would stick. There was no format. Things are much more formulated today. And when you see a game show, you're expecting to see points or, or, or little buzzers, right answers, someone winning a final round. You are expecting a certain formula. That I, I think it probably did exist here. I think that even the show with Groucho Marx was like a game show. Yeah, I'm, I'm let's assuming. Make a deal. Yeah, I mean, th- even that there was levels of it. I mean, right. Uh, viewer reviews, interesting and entertaining, but I can see. It wouldn't work for long. Forerunner of Family Feud, which you mentioned, Tim. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And someone says, reminds me of Jack Benny. Someone says, wow, what an awful show. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCA Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety... 69. <laughs> Tim, you ever 69 degrees, somebody? Uh, totally, all the time. As much as I can. That's where the phrase cold cock comes from. Um, the grading Love that scale. band. Oh, it's a great band. Do you want to talk about the grading scale? Sure. Uh, grading scale, one through seven. Uh, it's based off all the characters from the show Wings, which was an amazing television show. Uh, uh, one is the worst. That's a Roy Biggins. 
uh, a seven is the best. It's a Brian Atkins and everything in between. And, and that's the only way you could possibly rate uh, these pilot TV shows. Right. Tim, we turn to you. How do you rate second guessers? Uh, you know, I didn't hate it as much as I've hated most pilots that I've watched with you guys. Yes. So thank yes. you for that. Uh, I'll give this one a, a good four. Okay. It was it was enjoyable for what it was. It was short, which was nice. Um, I didn't know the people, but it was it was nice to see just sort of a snapshot of history, as we've mentioned. Oh, for sure. Seeing the women, how they reacted so differently than women of today would act. Uh, questions that you would never even think to ask a woman of today. Right. Uh, that shit was very interesting to me. So I'll give it a, uh, I'll give it a four. And I like that because I did write, it was entertaining to see the clothes styles, hairstyles in, in a different generation. So. Yeah. Yeah, those these are real people. When you when you're watching game shows, you're seeing real people and how real people dress. Even if it's kind of like the best version of that real person because mm-hmm. they know they're going to be on TV. But this isn't you know a costume department dressing up actors like how we usually see on pilots. So this is that's why game shows are maybe a little bit more fun and different than what we usually do. Captain Philip Rassisher, I turn to you. How do you rate second gassers? Well, <sighs> I'm, I like bells and whistles. I like something that's not super super easy. Uh, but I also know that I've been pretty hard on a lot of the pilots lately since mm-hmm. I've been back, and uh, it's been commented that my grading scale maybe is a little rough. Okay, but um, I did ins- I did enjoy watching Jack practically molest Brenda on television <laughs> and be fine with it. Uh, I liked how some of those guys were like, "No." I wouldn't marry her. <laughs> She's or, standing right there. Yeah, yeah. it's just, I, you know, so I, I'm going to give it a four as well. Two fours. I'm kind of right hey, there Jason, with you guys. Yeah. What do you rate? Thank you very much. Um, I'm fine. kind of between a four and a five myself. I like the show. Uh, there there must have been another round because even back then things were half hour or an hour, right? Mm-hmm. So we saw something that was 28 minutes. You throw some commercials on there. It's going to get you to what? Maybe like 35, 36 minutes. There's probably a round or something that we missed. Whatever. I think this would probably be good, I think, a half hour. I think if, if you do 22 minutes of this show and maybe a little quicker pace, there's there's a reason that Jay Leno's uh, jaywalking was so popular. People on the street stuff is funny. Don't make What's it live. What's the guy that does the, the on the street thing? Billy um, on the street. Billy, Billy Eichner. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I really enjoy that show. And that, that one is like... It's in your face, it was very yeah. in your face. Yeah, this is a really early version of that. I, I mm-hmm. like that they're talking to people again. They they should do it one on one, right, and and not in groups of people because that sways people's answers. Um, get a guy who's not named Jack or tell Jack Clark to say his name as a different name because that's confusing. Jack Carter, I think, pretty well known in the comic circuit back then. I don't know if he's the right host. I because he wasn't that funny. I didn't think. I think they could have got a better host for the show. Um, I like the idea that there is um, a lady or a guest that comes out, celebrity guest. There does need to be a point structure some, somehow. Maybe they have two second guessers face off against each other. You know, maybe there's a, maybe there's four or five at all at once. I don't know, but the, the premise is good. Where you're talking to people, I think I talked myself into a four. I agree with you guys. Three fours d- do it, and with that, we'll close the book on second guessers. And we'll never mention that show again. Yeah. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of The $10,000 Sweep. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A primitive version of The $10,000 Pyramid. The host asks a question, and if the correct answer is given, it will lead his or her teammate to identify the identity, rather, of a related person, place, or thing. If a team makes a sweep by winning four games in a row, they win $10,000. You can find the entire episode of the $10,000 Sweep by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes or go to YouTube, Blake. And you know what to do, Tube. <gasps> Fantastic. Um, how do you ha- You've been doing this just as long as us, Tim, if not longer. How do you handle the portion of the show where you're like telling people to check out your social media stuff? Do you do that at the front end? <clears throat> we do it at the front end. See, yeah. I think we need to change it to the front end. Okay. Yeah. I've always thought that, but you have always refused to. Shut do up. That. Well, nope. we don't. <laughs> we can, we don't we even, can start doing that next week. We don't do much social media shit. We have a Facebook group that I am no longer part of. Fuck Facebook. And that's really all we do. On oh, what, did something happen that makes you not want to do it? I just think Mark Zuckerberg is just fucking terrible, and I think fa- Facebook's a terrible platform, and I'm off. Mm. What do you it. think about Instagram? Because our Instagram is pretty hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Instagram's great. 
Okay, because I, you know, I think ours is pretty banging right now. Yeah, you're on Instagram for Internet Freak Show, right? Yeah, I am for Internet Freak but Show, but not you're not on Twitter for that. I I have a Twitter account, but I don't do much of anything with but it. But it's just you. It's not the Internet Freak Show, right? Right. Okay. Oh no, I do have one for Internet Freak Show too. Do you? Okay, I looked it up. I couldn't find it, so oh. I have to look again. Yeah. Okay. Don't bother. I don't do anything with well, it. You know what? I won't Come then. On. All right. Yeah, I won't don't do bother. it. Yeah. Don't. Jeez. Do you ever go through all your Twitter followers, Blake, and, and unfollow the ones that don't follow you? I don't use Twitter. Yeah. I don't know how to use it. I don't yeah. understand it. Yeah. I get confused by it. I don't know. I don't know. I, when I get on there, I'm like, how do I, how do I find this stuff I want to know about? Despite yeah. all the effort and time that you've put into trying to learn how to use it. it no, I haven't put any effort. I know, I know, you, I know you haven't. <laughs> do you want to start doing that at the beginning of the show? Yeah, I think I think we should change it up to where you put the... Because how 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 many people are going to listen to this complete show and then hear your contact information? I you think gotta, how gotta, many people listen to it. Period. <laughs> over a thousand a month. What? I, I have no idea the numbers. I honestly have no. Clue. To me, that's fine. Is that true? Yeah, with oh, no with no work, fine. with that's no good. work, that's uh, that's fine. That is good. Okay. That's great. Well, if they wanted to, this is the this is the last. This is the couch pilot's guarantee. This is the last time you will hear it at the end of the show. All, All right. right, I like that. Um, couchpilotspodcast.com it's a website that Blake paid for he, he opened up his wallet he took out his credit card maybe his debit card and paid for this he owns it okay all of our shows are on there all the different ways to contact us including Facebook our, our Twitter our red hot Instagram <laughs> or go to patreon.com and give us your money we'll spend it and then uh, call us at 910pilots1 that's 910-745-6871 leave us a voicemail and you'll get to hear what your dumb, stupid fucking voice sounds like right on this show. Yeah, and um, also, uh, that is one of only a few places where you can hear all the episodes, because we have over 250. Couchpilotspodcast.com. Yes, and that and Spotify are really the only places you can hear every episode. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. if you're one of those fucking Apple people, yeah. on go to... on. With, Apple Tunes or whatever. With it's your called. phones that work properly, <laughs> that you can actually get Spotify on. Just saying. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Uh, do you have anything? You know what I'm saying? We, <laughs> yeah. we, we, t- we talked a little bit about Internet Freak Show and uh, challenge. Is there anything else that you want to plug or talk about at the end of the program? I'll plug my wife's podcast. My wife got the podcasting bug. It only took 14 years for her to realize that podcasting's fun. So she started one called Brace in Place. It's about this TV show Snowpiercer. If you're into Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer was a movie with like Chris Evans? Yeah. Super weird movie. What, was Tilda Swinton in that too? She was. Okay. I, I always heard good things about it, but I never saw it. But now there's a TV version of it. Is it on, mm-hmm. is it on Amazon? It's on TNT. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's the first season is on HBO, HBO Max or whatever. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a weird movie. It's a very strange TV show, but it has its moments. His wife is very smart. She's smart. Yeah. She's smart as Tim because they're like doing shows based on like things that are popular. Yeah. <laughs> Where we, me and you sat down and we go, well, I had What's the idea. some shit nobody's ever heard like, of? Yeah. I was like, there's this TV show that I love that everybody's heard about. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear what, what do you got? What is it? The Golden Crown. Never heard of it. I hate it. Okay. You want to do just like pilots that nobody's ever seen before? Yeah, let's really paint ourselves into a corner. <laughs> I'm a fucking contrarian. I'm not, I, don't want, I don't want anything popular. Uh, I would. <laughs> I would have nothing less. We actually we'd already be done with the Golden Girls podcast. If we oh, yeah, there that. couldn't have been two hundred fifty episodes. Yeah. Well, they're all in DVD, which says there's probably audio commentary. So we'd have to go back and watch them all again oh, with the audio yeah. commentary. Mm-hmm. What, what's the, what's the podcast called? Brace face. Brace in place. Brace in place. Now, what the fuck does that mean? It's something that they say on the TV show when they're about to hit a uh, an avalanche or a fucking okay. patch of ice or whatever. Brace in place because the train gets wobbly. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of Snowpiercer? Yeah. No. It, it is a show and or a movie that takes place entirely on a train. Yeah. It's the end really? of the world. Everybody's dead. The world is frozen except for these people on a train. And the train has to constantly be moving. Huh. Yeah. It's like speed, but in the winter on a train. <laughs> that's yeah, that's exactly but right. and and it does have Keanu Reeves and Dennis Hopper in it. Yeah, yep. so good show. Nice. All right, well, Tim, thank you so much. It's hard to believe it's been uh, goddamn near a year yeah. since we've seen yeah. you in person. But Thanks it, for having me back. It's great to have you back. Um, uh, oh, uh, I don't know if we could talk about this on on air. You might have to edit this out. But uh, the the Wolfords are Wolfords. they? Were they the, we we had them over like twice mm-hmm. since quarantine, right? Yeah. Do you think? Do you think Brian would come back, or is he? It, I think so. Is he politically crippled? Politically crippled. Yeah, like I'm I, not I, sure what you mean by that. Like uh, people, like I've, I've heard, snap? I've, I've heard just... tell of him, like like going like nuts over Trump stuff. Oh yeah, we both do. Yeah, he and I fucking hate Trump. Right, right. I mean, no one. I I I didn't vote for Trump. I don't care for him. I can't speak for Blake necessarily, but like 
but like to to the extreme where it it wildly is negatively affecting his life. <laughs> Well, he's not. Trump's gone, so I would think he'd be. Good he's okay. Now. Yeah, he's all right. I hope. He's I fine. worry about him because I've heard tell of things that that has me concerned for him. <laughs> and I just I gotta know what did you hear tell? Well, I can tell you offline, but th- <laughs> but this is what I will say that like uh, as much as Trump is is awful and, and, and makes this made this country laughable and is embarrassing, like he didn't really negatively affect my day to day life. Right. And as soon as someone does that, then I'll go start a fire somewhere. Right. I mean, I, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I did I did go out in a march once for Black Lives Matter, you know, that whatever. But, like, I wasn't negatively impacted seriously by Donald Trump being in office. I could just see the damage that he was causing overall, mm-hmm. you know. But it didn't affect me negatively. So, to me, I can't see it being such a negative thing in my life. But we're like, like Brian, I heard like cut ties with some people and like, oh. and like, like walled yeah. off socially from things because of, because of people and some of their opinions, which I, I have people that are close to me that did support him and I would never shut them off because of what they believe. Because I think there are people that are like, there's a really s- small sliver of folks that are so like, we're Trump crazy. Mm-hmm. And like those people are fucking animals. And if they're in your life to begin yeah. with, you could have spotted them a mile away. Right. right. You know, but that's one of the reasons I hate Facebook because Trump really did make me hate my Trump and Facebook made me hate my fucking uncle who lives down in Georgia. Mm-hmm. I he fucking was, hate him too. Though. Yeah, he I, was one of these sucks. serious pro-Trump, <laughs> anti-vax, just fucking lunatic. Yeah, people. Um, but he was so, a lunatic before. Yeah, but I don't. His I uncle? didn't know it. Yeah. I didn't know that he was a lunatic okay. until he started <laughs> posting all that shit on Facebook. Uh, weird end of the story. My uncle ended up getting in a blood infection and they cut his legs off. Mm-hmm. How but, fucking weird is that? Wait, wait, stop me where. Where like they right cut the hip. Hold on, right, right, right. the hip. Ooh, hip. The hip. Yeah, Ooh. he's just like a stump in a wheelchair. It's all fucked up. Ooh. He's a human. He's the human stump. You should do an internet freak show about him. <laughs> yeah. And with that, oh, actually, Blake, you usually have something at the end of the show. Yeah. So this is our. Uh, this is the game show season, mm-hmm. and uh, on episode one, I told everybody that I was going to give my gambling tips a, a gambling tip for each episode oh. of this one the, the word degenerate can be used for a lot of things <laughs> oddly enough a lot of them apply to blake sure including most. gambling mm-hmm. right and, I, and i'm i'm one with the masses so i'm trying to help the masses out so uh this week um uh my tip is it's very simple you have a let's say you have, you have to decide I'm going to gamble with one hundred dollars tonight or I'm going to gamble with fifty dollars. Get a set amount in your head. Get a set amount in your head. Let's use one hundred dollars because it's an easy number. Sure. So I get five twenty dollar bills. Okay. Uh-huh. I put them in my left pocket. Sit down in a machine. Put my twenty dollars in, and I play. And if I get over thirty dollars. Like if I win a bonus or something, get thirty or thirty-five dollars. I push the button to collect. I either go and I, you know, cash that ticket in, or I put it in my other pocket, my right side, and I get the twenty out. If I if I feel this machine is doing well or whatever, you you got to break it up. You can't put the hundred dollar bill in because you'll just keep going like this. And if you get ahead, you won't put you won't you won't push the button. So you get that twenty. And you say, okay, if I get above thirty, I'm ca- or thirty or dollars or above, I'm cashing it out. I, you have that other twenty, but you got to put that ticket mm-hmm. in this right side pocket because what will happen? And based off my tips later on in this season, right, is you will when you're done, you will have a right side full of tickets. And 90% of those tickets will have more than you put in. So let's say, just hypothetically, even if you cashed out at $25 each time, let's say, you know, and, and you're not always going to be ahead. You're going you're gonna to lose a 20. But let's say you have five 20s, okay? You cash out at 25 and put that in there, okay? You're going to have money... More money than when you started. It's called the pocket ticket. The pocket ticket method. Now, you need to write a you book. You can't go back. Do not. You cannot pull out of. You cannot pull out of the right pocket until you're at the at the uh, ATM scanner thing, right. collecting the money. You can't pull out to play. Are you saying that with your method you will always win? No, hold, no, on, hold on. No, let me no. let me finish. You, you will always win. 
or that you're just minimizing losses? Minimizing losses. Yeah. Okay, because it almost sounded like you had, I was getting it from you that you felt like you had beat the system. No. Which sounds something <laughs> like a crazy person. No, would I say. just, I, I think you, you, ha- you, at the end of your session, you are going to lose less or win more than if you put a hundred dollar bill okay. and, and bang and, and don't walk away from. Okay. Okay. And like I said, this isn't just one tip is going to solve the world. I've got ten tips that will make you a better gambler. This is great. I'm not not a gambler at all. I won eighty bucks tonight before you guys came over. Congratulations, boy! I won one hundred and eighty Saturday night. Next round of beers on you. I thankfully I don't gamble at all. I don't care about it. It Doesn't do anything for me. I went to uh, Las Vegas once. I just went there for the whores, Um, and I did no gambling whatsoever. You gambled, Tim? I like to gamble. Not not often, but. you know, the boat maybe once every two, three years, and then Vegas every five years old. Yeah, that's all you, you know, need. A couple, hundred, I lose a couple hundred bucks, and then that's it yeah. for a couple years. Well, yeah. Blake's got yeah. a system, and I and I am excited to hear more of your tips as time goes on. Yeah. But with that, this pilot may have been rough. It is always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. Right, right, right. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.